Hey girl, <laughs> what's going on people? How y'all doing? Hold up, let me get my earrings together, girl. Y'all, I just love when things make sense. So like, I went out last night, okay, me and my husband went to a burlesque show and then we went to like a secret location spot that was real dope, right? So it was a whole like little cute night. And I remember feeling like I need more hoop earrings. Like I just need more earrings. Like I remember feeling like that before I went out. And then I was gifted these earrings. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> I was gifted these earrings. Okay. We bought some other stuff. Um, but shout out to uh, Dianita Lyons. Okay. Um, shout out to her. Hold up, y'all. I'm about to show y'all her Instagram. Because I want y'all to go follow her. Because she gave me these earrings. And I really like them. Like, as soon as I saw them, I was like, girl, how much are these? And I was like, all right, I'm going to come back. Because I only had, like, cash on me. And I was going to come back in the intermission. And she just brought him something. I was like, wow, with the, with the shells on them, come on. In my yimmy ya, okay, energy. All right, look, this, this her Instagram right here. Y'all see? Screenshot it, girl. Okay, go follow her. <clears throat> okay. But anyway, I'm here to talk about this Tasha K interview and the leaked phone call that Tasha K did with Rocky Bivens. And just so y'all don't feel like y'all getting the same damn content from another person. <laughs> the, 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 the things that Rocky was saying made me want to go look up that BBC interview. And that BBC interview, Google sent me to a YouTube page that read an article that he did. Um, <clears throat> and that also kind of gave a little backstory into him in the music business. And it's giving sketch. It's giving sketch, girl. I'm going to just go ahead and tell y'all. Make sure y'all like the video as y'all come in so that y'all can tell the people. Make sure you are subscribed to my channel, girl. It's Roll to 100K. Help me out, okay? Help me out. Shout out to Nola Reads, okay? Y'all make sure y'all follow her. Subscribe to her YouTube channel as well. I know she just did her live on this, Okay? And, you know, I appreciate your contribution to this live, okay? You know, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> y'all make sure y'all follow her. Not you doing research. Girl, listen, I was just like, it piqued my interest. And he just was, he was speaking in such a manner that it made me need more context. Because he, the way he was speaking, I'm going to put it, I put it in my notes. Because sometimes I forget, like, the words I want to use to explain what I'm picking up because I know sometimes it's hard for people to catch what I'm putting down. <laughs> okay. But in my notes, I put somewhere in there how fast he was talking. Um, yes. Talking fast, not saying anything, breaking up sentences. And that was another thing for me, like constantly breaking up his sentences in a way that made me feel like, you're doing something so that you don't have to tell us the truth. It's like, I can't think of the lie I want to tell fast enough, or I don't want to say too much because I don't know what can be proven later on. It was just a lot. Okay. And because I did not feel like us sitting through that, I just went ahead and made notes. So we're going to talk about, first, we're going to start with Tijuana, AKA uh, the mistress bka unique okay we're gonna talk about her portion of the interview first then we're gonna get into rocky and tasha's phone call that he didn't know she was recording child when, when people gonna learn because he acted like he knew who she was but apparently you really didn't know who she was that's what it's giving it's giving you thought you knew who she was but you actually did not <laughs> not at all if you thought that conversation wasn't going to be put on the internet Okay, it, we have to make content and we got to make content uh, valuable behind a paywall. <laughs> I'm so glad people just like me. Okay, so I don't, I don't really be having to, you know, you know, do all this extra shit. I don't have a team. So don't don't look for me to do it. But y'all know I'm, I'm going to give to y'all what I got to give. Okay, Nicole, thank you so much for the super chat. Been waiting on your fine tale to speak on this shit because child is a mess. Thank you so much. Oh, my God. 
Listen, <laughs> I appreciate you. So, after we finish the phone call, I'm going to just give y'all a little backstory on Rocky. No, you know what? <clears throat> I'm going to give y'all the backstory right now so that it makes a little bit more sense. So, what I, what I, because the YouTube video that I watched, okay, is from Goddess Dawn. Hold up. Is that, yes, it's from Goddess Dawn Speaks. Okay, Goddess Dawn Speaks on YouTube did this video a year ago during the R. Kelly trial, okay? Specifically because Rocky was very closely connected to Robert. And the backstory that Rocky said, this was an interview she read and I listened to it, she said, <clears throat> and y'all can go, you know, watch it for yourselves, was that R. Kelly met rocky in a gym or something like that and then invited him to do security and then a homeboy uh who was on stage during stage work with r kelly something happened it was his brother r kelly's brother was like doing the stage thing with him and he didn't like it it was like a f you to the brother so he asked rocky to do it so now rocky's on stage with r kelly and doing security um all throughout this time, he's also managing him. Tupac tells Rocky that you should be a manager because there are not many people who could handle Robert the way you do. So you should be a manager. <clears throat> so Rocky is managing R. Kelly for free. And he was doing this because he felt like I'm going to use R. Kelly to get where I want to go. So he don't even have to pay me because being around him is, is making me you know, be where I want to be. And he's very true. This is very true. Barry Hankerson is the one that gave him and R. Kelly the Rockland label that he was talking about during this Tasha K phone call. Okay. <clears throat> so it was a lot of conversation that lets me know what he was saying to Tasha without saying it to Tasha is Tasha. I know you think this a big story, but see, I'm real, real big and deep in this Hollywood shit and this black Hollywood shit. I go back to Michael Jackson and, and Britney Spears and Barry Hankerson and being present at Aaliyah and R. Kelly's wedding, you know, things like that. I'm here. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Which is why he kept mentioning the R. Kelly situation. And I'm going to tell you something. At the beginning of that phone call, he says to her, I always liked you because you knew what to say. And, you know, you 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 ain't make it so that I had to come out and say anything. And what that made me feel like is he liked the fact that when Tasha was reporting on R. Kelly's situation, she ignored his part in it. She didn't talk about his part in it. She didn't really bring him up as much. And that made him feel like, oh, I like Tasha. So when they get on the phone, there's this, this weird one-sided camaraderie that he's having with her because he likes the way he was kept out of the report about R. Kelly. Like that's, that's what it was giving me. <laughs> That's what it was giving me, y'all, okay? And when he's talking about all of these, you know, oh, I'm big, it's bigger than that, it's bigger than that. All of that is bigger than that talk means that I can get you tea on bigger stories if you let this little shit slide. That's what all of that sounded like to me. So it, it was like I needed to go and find more information and dig into the shit he was saying a little bit, just a little bit, not a lot, okay? Just a little bit, not a lot. But it definitely made me, like, need to understand. Also, yo, he worked with R. Kelly for, like, 14 years. Like, <laughs> he was there for a long time. And not only that, he and R. Kelly worked on B2K together because he was the assistant. So when you put him around all of these people, when you put him in all of these problematic circles, okay, you have to believe one or two, like a couple of things for me. For one is that you got mind control over Tasha, period. You've learned how to do it. You've been around people who do it. You also recognize that you cannot get paid for something at the beginning so that you can get a bigger payoff on the end, which to me translates to being in a relationship with a woman you may not necessarily be that into, but that you can like really build this, this thing with. 
Like, to me, that's what it feels like. <laughs> it feels like the fact that you will work for R. Kelly for all of those years as a manager, as security, not get paid, and then say, then tell Robert, you know what, don't pay me because I'm going to get mine anyway. To me, that means that you are okay with playing the long game. And your relationship with Latasha very much seems like somebody that played the long game. Yes. And also pimp mentality, knowing how to men mentally manipulate women. Like you're in circles with people that do this. And not only do they do it in their relationships, they do it in business. So when you tell me these are the circles of people that you've been around and then you get on the phone with Tasha and you do all of this big chess, you know, uh, talking and shit about how big this is and, and who you are and how, you know, you really laid back and what you got, you know, who you can call and how you can get this shut down and you could have helped her with the Cardi B situation, all of that, all of that stuff. Yeah, man, that, that, that's giving, you know, how to manipulate and you know how to use, you know, how to use situations at your advantage. And I said, you felt grimy to me. And I feel like all of that backstory tells me you absolutely <laughs> giving grimy. Okay. You're giving grimy. And, and, and also I feel like there's going to be more shit coming out about Rocky, I believe, I could be wrong, allegedly, as it relates to him and escape. There's going to be more stuff coming out. I don't think this Tamika check thing is the only issue. There's a reason why they don't have a manager right now. Also, y'all remember when we talked yesterday about Latasha's live? She said something that stuck out to me. She said, Candy is the one. And I know how y'all feel when you know about me and Candy and all of this, but hear me out. She said in that live that Candy is the one that asked for him to be their manager back in the day in the 90s with Escape in 1995. Why would Candy, one of the youngest people in the group, ask for somebody that's only been managing and not even really managing like that for like a year? Why would she suggest that he's the manager? He said in his story, in this article that he, you know, answered questions for, he said JD put him in charge of escape. And the only reason why that happened was because of Latasha's faith in him. So yeah, no, <laughs> we're not gonna keep this, you know, oh, it's candy, it's candy, it's candy. We no, baby. Okay, that's a lie right there. That was a lie right there when you brought that up. Because I was like, why would Candy, you know, if I'm recall, like, y'all came out, you know, 94, 95. Like, these are the years of the first two albums or whatever. And you mean to tell me that Candy, one of the youngest people, if not the youngest person in the group, is the one that's making decisions for who's going to manage y'all? That doesn't even make any sense. But that's what you said, though. In your video where you, you know, had your turtleneck and you was doing all the big arm gestures and shit. <laughs> like, and Rocky himself says that JD did that. And JD probably did that because you pressured him to do that. Also because of his connection with R. Kelly. And then you got Tupac speaking for him. And you got, you know, Barry Hankerson eventually speaking for him. He had a lot of people. And honestly, y'all, I don't know if y'all pay attention, but to me, what I've noticed, even in business, even in corporate America, that the people who get where they get sometimes, sometimes they get there because they know shit about people in certain places. They've seen things, they've been abreast of certain things, and they can use the information that they have to get where they're trying to go. I'm just saying, because everybody was real cool with R. Kelly in the 90s, even though this shit was going on back then and everybody knew about it. So that tells me that there are other people around that probably, you know, kind of had, okay. Let, so what's your boy name? Hugh Hefner. Hugh Hefner was like a place that everybody could go and do they, they creep shit. I feel like on some level, R. Kelly might have been like a place that people could go and do their freak shit. And then you got Rocky being grimy, paying attention, being smart enough to only be with people that are of a certain age. The first thing he does when he gets solidified in the business is to wife up Latasha. 
which means he has somebody to say, oh, I got a woman. So y'all ain't got to put me in that. My woman, my age. But at the same time, you're at the wedding. <laughs> you know these people who are involved. And it, to me, it just seems like you know the right buttons to press with the right people. And that's why you were able to get where you got. But essentially, if Latasha had a business making $14 million the way you said she did in that interview, I would have to wonder why y'all are, you know, doing all of this extra shit on reality TV if y'all don't really need the money. Why, you know... <laughs> Why are y'all stealing money, allegedly, allegedly? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I have questions. I have questions. I don't quite understand, but it feels sketch. It, it feels sketch, okay? Um, so I'm going to just start off right there, okay? Make sure y'all like the video. So let me see if I can speed through this whole Unique situation. Unique really felt a way about Tasha K talking about her, the picture of her infant when she, you know, she had the sonogram and Tasha K got up there and said that it was fake and, you know, all of this stuff. So the girl was really feeling the way the girl wanted to rock Tasha. She was looking to come up around her way on some street shit. Okay. And she said another thing, bitch, I'm fertile as fuck. And I was just like, wait a minute. <laughs> Who said you wasn't fertile, my girl? What is going on? Like, Tasha must have really went in. And I remember that video, but I'm not going back to it. I don't, I don't need to. It's just not that important. Okay? But I know she went in on old girl. Um, So, she was really hurt behind what Tasha said about her ultrasound. She's been talking to him for almost five years. On July 15th of this year, it would have been five years. She has a picture with Candy at a bedroom Candy event. So everybody thought that Candy paid her to come out and do this. But she said no, even though she went up for Candy in the interview. And she says it just so happens that she decided to spray Rocky during the Soul Train Music Awards situation where Tasha wore the green dress. And then it was all of this y'all being mean to her, you know, controversy. Okay. Um, but Unique or Tijuana likes to go to different events and meet people and take pictures. That's what she likes to do. Okay. So she has several pictures with several different people. Did I forgot to mention that Rocky? No, I, I didn't forget to mention it. We're going to get to it. I'm sorry. Because, you know, he threw out Trey songs like that wasn't also a red flag for me. <laughs> Never mind. Okay. So she was in a full blown relationship in her mind. She said she was being patient because basically he was telling her that he was going to be moving money from you know he and Latasha's accounts over to an account with her so that they can buy a house together and then they would be able to live and be together and he would be able to just be happy because he's not really happy with her and he's tired of living this fake life I guess for the business you know that's what he's telling the girl right like I could believe that for sure and she definitely had five years of text messages like Tasha was scrolling for a long minute and stopping on certain things and you know you just don't make up like text messages in a stream like that like a thread like that no like that's nah especially when you know Tasha was able to place the fact that he was sending out the same dick pic to different girls including unique girl it's a lot <laughs> I just that's a lot that's a lot going on just in that little bit okay um but yeah so she was pregnant three times she said okay that's why she said she was fertile as fuck okay we know about the first pregnancy because that's the sonogram she posted. I mean, the ultrasound she posted, September 2021. He switched up on her after that. He told her that she was going to ruin their lives by being pregnant and blowing up the spot. He put a lot of pressure on her to, you know, get rid of that pregnancy um, because he wasn't ready to leave yet. He hadn't gotten all of the money together yet. He threatened to take the baby from her. Oh, me and Tasha going to take the baby. We're going to go. We're going to take you to court and have your baby taken away. And honestly, y'all, that's something that these old niggas, like, th that's a thing. Like, that's a real thing, y'all. So I kind of believe all of this that she's saying because it sounds about right. And as a chick from New Orleans, when she was talking about how she believed the fact that he was married and, and in this, you know, situation with her, and, you know, living with her but not really with her is because there are a lot of older couples that do the same thing. <laughs> like, in real life, there are a lot of older couples that have this exact arrangement. And she said her parents had this arrangement as well, okay? Um, so that's why she believed his lies, okay? Um, 
he was trying to get her to, you know, get rid of the baby. He called one of his other outside children so that you can hear her sad story. She was like, yeah, he gonna call her on the phone or whatever. And, you know, she was just saying how it really affected her life, that she wasn't a part of, you know, his family's life and all of that. And it really had her feeling away. And that was all good and everything. But I ain't really care about none of that, okay? Uh, <laughs> and it's like, girl, what happened to you caring about the kids? Okay, I thought you cared about the kids, girl. Okay, it feels like you telling us you don't care about the kids because she kept telling us how much she loved the children okay throughout the interview and that's why she ain't like them playing with her pregnancies okay don't play with my baby it, it's not a baby though baby it's not it's not it, it, it could have been but it was not okay so yeah <laughs> and then y'all Tasha's so shady so she was so stressed out she decided to go ahead and do what he asked her to do you know right right before the deadline which is three months and Tasha said Child, that was a baby. I said, Tasha, go to hell. <laughs> I can't stand Tasha, y'all. Tasha be slick shading the fuck out people throughout these interviews. And I feel like some people pick up on it and some people really don't. I think she picked up on it. Anyway, so then after he called, after she did it, he calls her and says, damn, I was just about to call you and tell you not to do it. I was like, that's so crazy. I believe he did that shit too. That absolutely sounds like some master manipulation type shit to do to somebody. You basically bully them and stress them out to do this. They do it. And then you tell them that, you know, I was just about to call you and tell you not to do it as if it absolves you of guilt. It absolves you of, of being grateful grimy enough to ask her to put her body through that like I feel like men act like they don't know how big of a thing that is but I think they very much know what they're asking they just don't care okay so I, I believe all of that that she said y'all it's just it's way too specific and I also believe that Tasha isn't going anywhere because Tasha's not there okay Tasha's not in there okay so it doesn't it doesn't even matter Tasha's not there okay <laughs> um he told her he was going to take care of her and her kids if she just waited. She wrote a song about it and it had Tasha K's like portion, you know, something she said in a video. It was in the song. Tasha's like, thank you for putting me in the song. I was like, my mom made it. I said, Tasha, shut up. <laughs> and then she said that she actually uh, had another version of the song that was on YouTube, but she had to take it down because he got her, he copyright uh, stroke her um got her a copyright strike on youtube because she used their phone conversation in the song and i was like girl you did i need to find that okay like but you know i still believe her she said she had to cut his voice out but at the end you could hear her saying that she wanted to keep her baby so she wrote a whole song about that situation right so then she got pregnant the second time which was march 2022 he called her begging one night using R. Kelly songs, child. I said, not using R. Kelly song, okay? Um, and then one of the songs was a song that I knew. And when he when she said that, I was like, yeah, that's that's a song that you should use when you're trying to beg somebody. <laughs> I was just like, yeah, that sounds like one of them songs, you know, nigga big and then he send you a song like that. He old, you know what I'm saying? He an old 90s nigga that used to make mixtapes. That makes sense. Anyway, um, it, listen, it could all be a lie, but it seemed like an extravagant ass lie for somebody that we really kind of don't care about like that. Um, so then she says with that situation, she got pregnant when they were in Vegas and she ended up having a miscarriage. Um, and the third pregnancy was in August. OK, on a Texas trip. Now, she didn't tell us what happened with that one, but she says he asked if she was going to leave him like these other people. And I was like, not this nigga asking her, you about to leave me like all these suckers that it made famous. I said, not him using like what's love got to do with it. I turn the lingo in his everyday conversation with this girl. Oh, my God. She says that he will compliment her a lot and, you know, she reminded him of his mom and he cried in front of her. And don't no man just be crying in front of you. I said, girl, you listen, first of all, I know this girl from New Orleans and I feel like most black people in New Orleans have seen the five heartbeats. OK, so everybody know that there is a player type uh, OK, that is trying to snatch your soul through his penis. And one of the things he will do is break out in tears to make you feel like y'all have some type of, of, of trauma bond. And honestly, when I think about it, oh, my fucking God, that is what Robert used to do to those girls. Robert would meet those girls who had already been, you know, 
had issues when they were younger and cried to them about the issues that, you know, they went through and, and he went through and then they trauma bond about it together. And now I'm like, wow. So he, he using the same tactics. He's employing the same tactics, just doing it with people that are of age. And it still works because there are a lot of girls. And because I'm from New Orleans, I know this grown ass women with the mentality of a teenager. There are a lot of grown ass women, 40 something. She said she in her thirties, 30 something year old women with their mentality stuck in fucking 2002. Okay. So I absolutely believe that she believed <laughs> the bullshit that he was saying. I do believe that she could have been mind controlled by this man. I do. I do. Okay, he would compliment her a lot. And, and you already know that's probably child Latasha having her physical insecurities and having a man that knows how to compliment you until you feel like he in love with you, bitch girl. Crying with you and all of that, girl. They is not going nowhere. <laughs> it's not ain't going nowhere, okay? Um, but she says it made sense that he wasn't really with Latasha because even when you see he and Latasha in public, they don't really show any love. They don't show any affection. The relationship doesn't seem like, you know, one with somebody really into their man, you know, even if they man is an asshole, you know what I'm saying? And I'm like, that's because again, Tasha's not there. I'm gonna say it again. Tasha ain't there y'all. Okay. Um, she was married for 15 years. So when everybody keep calling her a side chick, she wants y'all to understand she was with the same man, married for 15 years, had her three children with that man. They broke up, okay? But she never did nothing like this before. She got cheated on in her previous relationship. So she said she did feel a way, but she really did think that he and Latasha weren't really together based on what she had seen. Um, and how often he would talk to her. She was like, his son got in a car accident and he's on the side of the road FaceTiming me, you know? And I'm just like, I mean, they do work overtime to make you feel like you important. <laughs> okay. Like they really do do that. And then when the whole situation came out and she posted, you know, saying she was pregnant and then came out and said she was hacked. She said he made her do that. She still loved him. She was just angry with him, but his PR team got to her. They deleted everything on his phone. He tried to, try to delete the stuff on her phone and she didn't do it. Okay. Um, but yeah, he would lie and say his page got hacked because she found out he was texting her homegirl trying to fuck her homegirl. And she says he really was out here like that, having unprotected sex with like her, Tasha and some other women. So yeah, it's real nasty around there. I mean, you could at least put a condom on you hoe, allegedly. Um, but yeah, so Tasha goes through the text messages, you know, Tasha, Tasha K goes through the text messages. We see cash apps, $1,000, $500, $500, flight info, um, a pregnancy test, um, a time that, you know, uh, he bought her a car, I believe. She has his real name, Edward, tattooed on her back, um, picture of plan B tests. Um, a whole bunch of girls say that Rocky ain't shit. Apparently those women that Rocky was messing with hit up Tasha K and they hit up unique Tijuana after she put the information out there. Okay. Tasha identifies the same dick pic between, uh, unique and Rocky. And then some other girls that said something in Rocky. Tasha said, um, Rocky, I got you rock hard right now. And I almost passed the fuck out. <laughs> <laughs> and then Tasha apologizes and bows down because this whole thing was because Tijuana was about to come and prove you wrong, bitch. Okay. I'm not that girl. You ain't about to play with me like that. Okay. Um, so yes, he also threatened her. He says he was going to sue her for defamation. So Latasha's interview on the radio to her kind of triggered her talking about there was no baby because now they're starting the process of acting like she never happened so that they can sue her for defamation. So that's why she responded so heavily to the comment about there not being an outside child on, you know, the radio with Shamia. Y'all remember that? Um, so yeah, he threatened to unalive her as well. Allegedly, this is what she said on the interview. Um, but he just kept saying he wanted to be happy before that. And she was trying to give him time to do so. 
Um, so that was Tasha's interview with the mistress. Now there are 1200 people in here on a Saturday and there are only 448 likes. If you want me to get to the portion of this conversation where Rocky talks to Tasha K, I'm going to need y'all to get them likes. Uh, I mean, that's not even halfway and I just feel disrespected. You know what I'm saying? What, what, what type of relationship are we in? Well, I come and give y'all all of this, you know what I'm saying? Giving you the best that I've got on a Saturday and y'all don't like the video. Like, that's just hurtful to me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, okay. So I'm going to just wait. I'm going to just wait on y'all. Um, But girl, Tasha will have you dying laughing, okay? Let me read some of these uh, super chats. Let me do that, okay, while y'all liking a video. And once I'm finished reading all of these super chats, then I will hope the likes are, you know, to a respectful level. Okay. I read Nicole's. Thank you, girl. I appreciate you. Um, okay, here we go. It's Shinese. Thank you for the super chat, love. I feel like he low-key knew he was being recorded because he kept saying, I'm not going to say much because we on the phone. Child, that's because he felt like the federal hood didn't tap his line. Thank you for the super chat. <laughs> when he kept talking about, you know, I got the federal and all of this, I was just like, sir, do you think them people still tapping your phone? Is that what you think? Uh, Tess, thank you for the super chat. Keep shining, Bondi. Oh, thank you. I, I'm trying, love. I am. The best Libra. Thank you for the super chat. Uh, Bondi, the true journalist. Listen, every now and again, I like to go back in my bag just a little bit. You know what I'm saying? But I, I still call myself retired. Okay. Thank you, Karen Patricia, for the super chat. Listen, y'all got my Saturday together. I told Alex, I need y'all to coordinate these lives because I love both of y'all too much to decide. I got you on my iPhone, Alex on my iPad problem solved. Oh, I didn't know. I love him. I'm going to I'm gonna have to watch his later too. Okay, I was watching him yesterday do a Real Housewives Ultimate Girls trip. Uh, all right, come on, saltwater daughter. Listen, you know I was looking for that to say your real name. <laughs> Because I know the picture. Thank you for the super chat. Uh, the lies, the lies, the lies. Okay. The lies. Okay. Listen. The candy quote. All right. D Vegas. Thank you for the super chat. Bonnie, thank you for reviewing. You always come through. Much love. Oh, thank y'all. Uh, didn't Ludacris do that to his mistress? Took the side baby from her? Sure did. Sure did. Sure did. <laughs> And I've seen that happen in real life. Like in real life, dudes will come home with their side chick baby and give it to the wife. Okay. Um, Asada, thank you so much for the super chat. Tasha husband is a real serial cheater. He don't respect himself or his marriage. Shaking my head. And Tasha going to be there looking stupid each and every time. And, you know, I feel like at least, you know, be living your life. You know what I'm saying? At least do your thing. If y'all going to be in a fucked up marriage for life. You know what I'm saying? Will and Jada. Um, thank you for another super chat, Demetria. Get the likes up. Yes. What we at is 700 likes and it's, it's 1200 people. I feel like we can do a little bit better than that. <laughs> Lady B, thank you so much for the super chat. Uh, super stick, a pet character stretching his arm for raising his thumb up. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Bondi Tyson. Thank you for my shirt. Once again, um, love you, Bondi. Like the video. Yes. Like, 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 the video okay vm tv fan thank you so much for the super chat finding it hard to believe that he signed britney he was he said he was assisting the guy who signed her okay but like he was working with that man when he signed britney so it's definitely a possibility but i also feel like there is some bullshit in there somewhere i just don't know where it is because i don't know his life like that but based on that interview he did you know a year or so ago when he's trying to separate himself from all of this r kelly stuff it, it definitely feels like you know he's been around for a long time been around the right people and definitely has you know got his finger <laughs> in the street where you know he knows what's going on and he knows the people that have done some you know some of the things okay so he was trying to tell Tasha that he could give her tea in this phone interview. All right. Okay. It's 1,300 people in here and 748 likes. I feel like y'all can get those likes up somewhere. Like I do. But I'm going to start. And then y'all can like as we go. And we have to, you know, stop at some point. You know. Wait, Ludacris cheated on you, Doxy? Yes. And had an outside baby. Him and uh, Dwayne Wade did it at the same time, I think. 
Dwayne Wade had an outside baby on Gabrielle Union, and uh, Ludacris had an uh, outside baby on Eudoxy. Um, shit, I feel like it might have been one more. <laughs> Thank you, Asada, for another super chat. Love you, Princess Bondi. You're the best. Oh, thank you. I appreciate you, love. Um, yeah, I'm telling y'all, he probably was around for that. He said he worked with some other people, you know, work with Michael Jackson and stuff like that. He also said in an interview with Tasha, like he was a crisis handler. He actually called himself Olivia Pope. I said, nigga, not Olivia Pope. Not Olivia Pope. <laughs> it is giving delusions of grandeur. It's what it's giving. I'm sorry, y'all had to hear me swallowing that, but I needed to get something in my throat before I continue. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Jackie Renee, for the super chat. So much entertainment on this good Saturday. Listen, I love it. Okay, so Rocky talks to Tasha K on the phone. And we, I feel like he's not dumb. So he knows that there's a possibility he's being recorded, but he's also trying to make it seem like, hey, this conversation never happened. And I can give you some real tea if you promise me it'll be anonymous like that's the vibe that it was giving okay it's me dina thank you so much for the super chat hey you uh you giving me life on my first my 51st birthday love your content huh have a great day happy birthday have a great day oh my god that is a good birthday girl happy birthday okay so okay rocky says he always liked tasha because she always said the right things for him to stay in the shadows, even with the Rob thing. I told y'all about that. How I feel like he was basically patting her on the back because she didn't bring his name up when she was reporting on what happened with R. Kelly. Tasha says that she went through five years of text messages between he and Unique. And he says Tijuana before she can even say Unique's whole name. So then he lets us know that he knows her real name. But it really doesn't matter because Rocky is setting it up as if this girl has been stalking him. OK, he's setting it up as if her and her family are some scammers that are trying to, you know, come to us with the bullshit. You know what I'm saying? Um, but essentially, don't nobody care about y'all like that for people to be doing long, you know, long game manipulation on you and Latasha. Just because that's something you would do to get ahead does not mean that everybody is trying to play long game for you and Latasha Scott, sir. OK. Tasha says, well, other girls have come forward and they've shown me some pictures of you. OK. And Unique has those same pictures and they don't know each other. He's laughing and shit, acting like, you know, <laughs> oh, Tasha, oh, oh, Tasha, okay? He uh, tried to delete the text on her phone, but she didn't let him. He says that she doesn't know him, but when she does, he will, uh, she will see why he was never brought up in the R. Kelly scandal. What does that mean, Rocky? Does that mean that you that you know some shit on some people and you're influential and, and you're kind of on the quiet of the influential? That's why you didn't get brought up in the R. Kelly thing. Was that a flex? Was that a flex to let Tasha know that you're bigger than she thinks you are? I feel like that that's what it was given. Once again, delusions of grandeur. I do believe that, you know, you may still know who to call Ghostbusters when it comes to protecting certain secrets and things like that. But I also feel like you know, you putting 20 on 10. He says they not even having this convo. He was really hitting her about the escape stuff. Okay. Um, but he was lying even within this interview. So he said it's nothing, but it's bigger. He and Tasha got the feds on this. She moved close to his house. It's a whole stalking case. I mean, this is really laughable. Okay. When, when, when she see what he got going on, it, it's really, really laughable. Okay. He kept Kept saying that over and over and over again. She goes to jail. Okay, he said, that's what he said. She gonna go to jail. That's a wrap. Oh, girl going to jail. Oh, yeah. He and Tasha been on that. That girl is a whole criminal, New Orleans style. Her family is scammers. I was offended, but it's the truth. 
Uh, not my family, but yeah, like I'm not gonna, <laughs> I'm not gonna say there isn't a certain New Orleans style um, that goes with being a scammer. Um, when she asked how he knows R. Kelly, he says he's Rocky from Rockland Records with R. Kelly. Okay, he has people with the federal government. He has, a, you know, he has his BBC interview. Go watch my BBC interview. Okay, he was telling R. Kelly what was going on for years. Okay, he worked with Michael Jackson, Trey Songs. Tamar Braxton okay they gotta talk they gotta talk he's not Todd he ain't like these other dudes he ain't like Todd Deisha okay he's behind the scenes for a long time in a real way okay he was with Michael through the scandal he started as security for R. Kelly he helped clean I said so you helped clean up Michael Jackson scandal because it never really got cleaned up so that just tell us you're not good at your job but you flexing, but you telling on yourself. Why are you around when all of these salacious things are happening? I can't believe it's because you a real cleaner. Your, your life not given, I'm making cleaner money. <laughs> that's not what it's giving. I could be tripping. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But that's not what it's giving. Okay? I need for it to make sense. Oh, so D, thank you for the super chat. He thought he finessed Tasha K. Big dummy. <laughs> Child, she kept trying to tell him, okay? Um, thank you, Selena Ziegler, for the uh, super sticker. Hands doing a fist bump. Okay. Follow, following Abyss, thank you for the super chat. Brittany was just signed to Jive. R. Kelly also was on Jive. Yeah, so that means if, if he was working, like, he's working with R. Kelly. R. Kelly's putting him in a room with these managers. These managers see him working with R. Kelly. They think that he's a good manager, so they put him in contact with other managers that may need help developing artists. And then boom, bow, pow, he's a part of the meeting or the situation where Britney gets signed. You know what I'm saying? Rockland Records, I remember reading that name in the credits. Oh, in what credits? And the credits of what? <laughs> okay, tell me. Okay, but anyway, so let me continue on. So Tasha asked if he told Latasha he was going to leave her for old girl. And did she know he was supposedly moving money? He says, Tasha, man, we going to listen. We're going to laugh about this in four or five years. I said, not four or five years. We're going to laugh about this. He's not answering anything directly. He just keeps saying that when Tasha finds out what's really going on, then she's going to understand and she's going to see his side of it. And she's going to say he's not a bad guy. He says, you see what the big news is today, huh? And she was like, oh, what you, you mean y'all stealing that $30,000 from Tamika? And he was like, what? No, that's not it. Okay, now my sister-in-law Tamika is sending me nude and naked pictures. Todd is sucking a tranny's penis and Tiny's in trouble. And I'm just kind of like, where they posted that at? <laughs> I said, where they posted that at? So by the end of the day, that news was supposed to have come out and proved to us that Rocky was on it from the very beginning, okay? And this has all been bull. Listen, I'm not doing this with y'all. Like, sir, where did you even come from with that? I ain't seen that nowhere else. <laughs> I ain't heard that nowhere else. And that was not the big story yesterday. It was you and your mistress. That was the big story yesterday, child. Okay, it wasn't this, what you talking about in the interview. It was the actual interview that Tasha did. <laughs> this nigga's so stupid, bro. Anyway, um... I think he threw that out to be salacious, thinking that Tasha might bite that shit. But Tasha just ignored him when he said it. Um, so she, Tasha then goes back to the 30K. So what happened with the 30K? He says he can't wait to sit down with her and connect Connect the dots, Tasha. Connect the dots. I can't stand when a motherfucker not answering a straight up question and they won't act like you not smart because you not figuring out what math they moving around in their fucking head on a clipboard to make their bullshit make sense. I ain't got time for Rocky with that. <laughs> Tasha's face she looks so tired child um but uh he says that Tasha didn't take Tamika's money Latasha did not take her sister's money um and that they were actually paying Tamika Tasha's money the royalty the royalty people mixed them up and she knew Tasha had wrote all, all those songs so now you saying that Tamika was stealing money from Latasha so now you flipping it okay then he says the scene where they talked about it was chopped and screwed we've already heard that from from uh 
from Latasha. He wants to tell her something, but he wants it to be anonymous. Then he starts saying it's some gang stuff. So it's only so much he can be involved in. Y'all hear? Y'all hear? Like all of this over dramatization. This is how he was talking to old girl. This is how he was talking to old girl. Like this nigga about to end up being like a, a ninja for the government by the time we get to the end of this shit. Okay? He stays out of the way because it's way bigger than this. He doesn't play this small game shit. This is laughable, okay? And he just gonna say it. He like Olivia Pope. He signed Tricky, okay? He signed Britney Spears. He's been doing entertainment in law for 30 years. Tasha asked if he ever cheated. He says, I mean, every relationship has its ups and downs, but we ain't never had no downs because we just human. I said, nigga, you contradicting yourself. <laughs> you contradicting yourself right now, okay? He said his relationship... With, with Latasha is bigger than he could make, you know, I'm sorry, no, his his relationship with Tasha K is bigger than this little silly ass story. So this is when I told y'all that he was basically telling Tasha, I could give you bigger, bigger fish if you could let this go. That was basically the, the, to me, the inclination of that. He's trying to prove a point and some people will be apologizing. And if she would have gotten with him about her Cardi situation, he says he would have fixed that too. And she was like, oh yeah, you're going to give me $4 million. He said, oh, why would they do that? I said, nigga, you know, you wrong. <laughs> Sitting up here talking about why would they do that? You know why they did that. Okay. Um, thank you for the cash app, Rochelle. Tasha says, I didn't know Unique's real name until you told me just now. And this is when Tasha is showing him that he didn't already fucked himself up. You know you didn't fucked up, right? <laughs> That's what that was. Okay. Um, cause she explains that, you know, I know you old and shit, but you leaving a digital footprint talking to this girl, your phone or her phone all of these years, like that can be looked into, sir. That's not something that you can just get rid of by changing your phone number. Your WhatsApp is still going to be what it's going to be as soon as you sign back into it. Okay. And then he tells her that he can't make babies. And so she, you know, Tasha was like, so did you have a vasectomy? And he said, no, it's a condition. That's why me and my wife was just laughing because it's like, oh, if she can have three babies, then I need to have another one. Um, and I was just like, yeah, but she did say that when her, when she had one of the miscarriages, they said it was something wrong with the sperm. Now, listen. She had this conversation with Tasha before Tasha got Rocky on the phone. So when Rocky says that he has some type of situation, she said that she already said that the doctor said it was something wrong with the sperm. So if she's really fertile and his sperm is not, you know, strong or right or something like that, she can still get pregnant, but she can get pregnant and the, the baby's not carried a full term. So I thought that was funny how he brought that up to try to prove that she was lying. But really, she said that was one of the reasons why she miscarried was because it was something with the sperm. I was just like, wow, you think you're clearing it and you're telling on yourself. <laughs> Tasha says, this is not looking good for you. If I was Latasha, with this shit I'm about to drop on you, you would not be breathing if you was my husband. And he says, when he puts this stuff out about this girl, she's going to say, I get it. And Latasha ain't going nowhere. And like I said, he was talking fast, not saying anything, breaking up his sentences. And then he tries to tell Tasha, well, let me give you the interview. Let me give you the tea you need so you could be the black Barbara Walters. And she was like, nigga, I'm already the black Barbara Walters, okay? <laughs> I'm like, not so much, but on the internet, absolutely um he knew about two other girls from two years ago he's not worried about it latasha not worried about it and when something comes out it's only going to help him that's what he said girl that's all of what he said okay and then i already told y'all um what the backstory was okay and in the backstory is he he's been involved with grimy creepy ass people for decades okay um, and it seems that's the reason why he's probably able to make these threats and, you know, move throughout his career in such a way. And I didn't say anything about it, but I mean, if y'all go watch that video that I showed y'all, um, you know, where I got some of this information about his relationship with Barry Hankerson and being at Aaliyah and R. Kelly's wedding, um, back in the day and, you know, them also managing B2K, all of that information, I, you know, I showed y'all the video at the beginning of this, you know, the YouTube page I got that from. She said at the beginning of the video, she thought that they was like, you know, they might have been like a little fling. Like him and Robert could have had a little fling. 
allegedly. I don't know. When she said that, I was like, oh, my God, do you think so? Like, that was why, because it didn't make sense why R. Kelly was moving him up in the ranks so quickly. Like, you just met him at the gym. Now you got him replacing your brother on stage. Then he your security and managing you. Now every time you do something, he doing it with you when it came to managing B2K and all that. Now he in the industry. Now Banker Barry Hankerson gives him a record label. Like, it's all, you know, <laughs> it's all very suspect. It's all very suspect. Um, The lady thought they was, you know, in some type of relationship. But I don't think, I don't know. I don't think so. It don't, I don't know. Because we know R. Kelly is a little switch. You know what I'm saying? He go both ways. He don't like to admit it. But we know that it's true because of the way he would turn a lot of those girls, you know, into studs. Um, Which tells me he wants you to look like a guy so that he could feel comfortable having, um, you know, relations with someone that looks like a guy but really isn't. Okay. Um, whole different conversation, you know, conversation for another day. Um, I'm surprised Michael Bivens has come to tell Rocky to stop the shenanigans because Rocky runs Michael Bivens production company. Really? Mm. Child, I didn't know that neither. He wanted it to be because I think him and Tasha sent them lies to the YouTuber because she is in the A. Oh, Okay, got it. So you think they sent some tea to somebody to, and, and that was that tea he was talking about and it didn't blow up like that because it's not really that believable. Um, You can't send tea and say something happened. You need evidence. Leave, you need to post the evidence, okay? Um, Thank you for the super chat, CCB. I'm confused how this would even be a federal case. Um, Stalking, you know, that type of stuff. I don't know. I don't know how it would be a federal case unless it was tied into the R. Kelly stuff. I don't know. Um, but the way he was talking about the R. Kelly thing during his interview with Tasha, it does make me wonder, you know, connect the dots. Nigga, what are the connections? Don't, don't make me work for it. Give it up. <laughs> okay. Um, keep in mind, all of those contacts are because of the clout Mike Bivens has actually. Okay. For real, real. Uh, the side piece isn't smart either. Let's not lose sight of that. Oh, no, she not. Like, nobody lost sight of it. Um, But to me, I feel like his his conversation with Tasha made me just want to look more into him. I honestly didn't even really care about the whole mistress thing. I only talked about it because somebody sent it to me and was like, Bondi, please talk about it. But essentially, I didn't even really care because niggas cheat. Like, niggas cheat all the time. It's, you know, like, honestly, it's not a big deal. She's not going anywhere. So I didn't even really care about the cheating thing, but especially because I didn't even know if I believed old girl because she said it was, you know, uh, her page was hacked and all of that. So I really didn't care. But I also knew that it probably was more likely that it, that it was true because why would anybody go through all of that to lie on you? Don't nobody cares. I'm sorry. But like in the grand scheme of celebrities to lie on so you can get something out of it, Rocky Bivens is not high on that list as far as I'm concerned. I just don't care. Um, that was for the chat. Oh, okay. All right. Y'all know I don't be knowing. I'm just reading stuff. Extortion is federal, but not stalking. And stalking has to be followed by something violent. I wonder if he's saying it was extortion. He might say it's extortion. And then that might have to explain some of those cash apps. I don't know. Uh, did Tia want to say if she actually did move near Rocky and Tasha? I don't know if that was cleared up, but I think, I think she did. I think she did move close to him thinking that they were going to be together. Um, because that's what he said. He said she moved close to me, but I don't know if she said it. Um, child, I'm not going back to listen again, <laughs> but I don't think she did. I don't think she clarified. Ain't nobody getting ready to post no stuff like that without no evidence. So they can be oh, and, uh, tied into Mika $4 million like Tasha O'Cardi. I know that's right. Like, uh-uh. Uh, Mike and Rocky are cousins. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. That makes even more sense about why he was like, you know, included, but it obviously he didn't really say anything about, um, new edition or Mike having anything to do with the beginnings of his career. He really just talked heavily about, um, R. Kelly. So yeah, <laughs> it's all very interesting, girl. Either way, that's all I got for y'all today. It was just a cute little hour live. I hope y'all caught the one that I did yesterday talking about the connection between Tamar and Latasha and why I feel like, you know, Latasha really, I mean, Tamar and Latasha are in cahoots and Tamar's trying to make Candy look bad. Like, I really do feel like that. I'm sorry, y'all. Like, the, the shit posting a picture with SWV to get Candy's fans to go at SWV, like, all of that shit, all of that is like, 
agent of chaos creation type shit. Like you're trying to create issues so that everybody could go with this person because you don't like this person. And why don't you like this person? You don't like this person because this person is really close with your friend that doesn't like this person because they're in a group together and she doesn't like that she has to share the spotlight with her. Like it's just, it's ridiculous. I, I think it's a whole bunch of mess. I think it's way more layered than that, of course. Um, but I'm just saying, like, when you all, when it all brawls down, like, y'all too old for this. <laughs> That's how I feel. Like, y'all too old for this. Like, Rocky, I don't know why you decided to get on the phone with Tasha K, but you made this situation way worse. Like, I'm going to just say that. Like, you made this situation way worse. Whereas we went from looking at this situation from, oh, you cheating, to now I'm looking at it like, damn, what type of shit are you involved in? What what bigger shit are you talking about, Rocky? Because I'm getting nervous. I don't know what's going on, okay? Oh, my God. Y'all make sure y'all like the video. I'm, I'm out of here, y'all. I hope y'all enjoyed. I'll talk to y'all later, all right? Peace out.